Hello, hi, uh, my name is Jerry Miller, the founder of Trend Signal, the trade education company. Uh, and this is part of our Monday Market Insight series. And today I'm going to be going through a curious topic called bad news is good news. Uh, and it's really about how economic data affects interest rate expectations and what's been happening uh, recently. Uh, so let's um, start with the first piece, which is how economic data affects interest rate expectations. First of all, just got to decide um, what we mean by economic data and how that affects the markets. Um, economic data is data about the financial economy. Um, so it's data about manufacturing, services, sales, unemployment, inflation, money supply. I mean, there are a number of key indicators or key releases that we look at, and all these make up, uh, give us a, a clue uh, and create a picture about the, how the economy is doing. All this um, basically tells us how well it's performing. Some data is historical, like gross domestic product data, which is really telling us how an economy has been doing. And some data like consumer sentiment, which tells us um, how uh, happy or sad uh, consumers are feeling, is a leading indicator. And it will tell us how much they're going to be spending, which leads to future sales and future profits for companies. Um, good economic data has a positive effect on equity markets and a negative impact on bond markets. Uh, bond markets are sort of less well understood uh, than equity markets, but are an important section of the financial markets and tend to be sort of more professional in their um, attraction. Um, the reason why strong economic data is bad for bonds is because strong economic activity puts pressure on the demand for money, uh, puts prices up and inflation follows. Uh, and inflation, as um, we all know, uh, is bad for bonds because it erodes uh, the value. Um, in a balanced portfolio, typically um, investors opt for a, a traditional 60-40 split. Uh, what we mean by that is 60% uh, in equities, 40% in bonds. Uh, and the reason being is that if equities are, are not performing, bonds tend to outperform. Um, of course, uh, the first six months of this year um, have been uh, a nightmare for investors, really, with equities and bonds both slumping. Uh, so this typical portfolio approach has suffered a, a double whammy. And the reason being, obviously, because of um, QE, the ending of uh, the artificial support for bond markets. And so bond markets have fallen at a time when equities are falling, which is not what you'd normally expect. And obviously, with good, that's with good economic data. For bad economic data, the opposite is true. Uh, so bad economic data is bad for equities and good for bonds. However, um, we have had some interesting news over the uh, last few days. Uh, or unwelcome news really on the economy in the US had the opposite effect on the markets. In what was thin trading, so um, on Monday uh, this week is, um, or was the um, Independence Day celebrations of the markets were shut. So effectively it's a three day uh, long weekend. And on Friday, the markets were a little bit thin, uh, uh, but they rallied, equity markets rallied following what was a, a poor ISM manufacturing report. And you might think, well, why would one report have this effect? Um, but there are other reports as well, bad data that's starting to be positive for equity markets. So the poor Institute of Supply Management Manufacturing report was came in at about 53, I believe, from uh, expectations of 54.6. But also in the same report, corporate executives noted that new orders and employment conditions had worsened over the month. So why did equities rally on the back of this? This poor data suggests that the US economy is at risk of going into recession um, if, this can, if this trend continues, if it's not already. But the uh, typical description of a, a recession is two quarters of ne negative growth. And we haven't had that yet, but it will take a good five months before we get confirmation of that, by which time it's possible we won't be in a recession. Um, anyway, the poor data has reduced the scale of interest rate rises from the Fed. And I just want to now look at the FedWatch tool again to show you how uh, that uh, those um, predictions have softened over the last week. So here we have the um, FedWatch tool from the Chicago Mercantile Exchange. And we're looking at the date of the 14th of December, which is the last Federal Reserve or FOMC meeting of the year. And you can see that with interest rates currently at one and a half to one and three quarter percent, the prediction is that rates on balance will be three and a quarter to three and a half percent by the year end. 
Uh, and what's interesting is if you look at this table at the bottom here, we can see what expectations were a week ago. So you can see there was a 40% probability for a, um, um, rates to be at three and a half to three and three quarter percent by year end. And, and now that's at 27.4. And there was an 11% chance of rates being at three and three quarter to 4%. That's now at 3.3. Likewise, the probability of a rate, the rates being at three to three and a quarter percent have increased from 9.3 percent to 20 percent. So that's really a general softening in what the market is thinking the Federal Reserve will be doing with interest rates um, through their next four meetings and by the end of the year here. Um, so, so that's it. It's bad news is good news for now. Uh, and for those of you who do follow the bond markets, you'll know that the yield fell quite sharply on Friday, again in thin pre-holiday market trade, but the yield fell 13 basis points to 2.88%. Um, so quite interesting. So on to the next bit, um, will aggressive central bank tightening lead to a recession? Um, if inflation remains stubbornly high, uh, then I think it's difficult to see actually um, how central bankers would want to support their economies by not raising rates appropriately when inflation is running really hot. Um, all central banks are mandated to maintain price stability. So not raising rates enough to curb runaway inflation will look like a, I guess, a dereliction of duty. So when you've got the likes of Jay Powell from the Federal Reserve, Andrew Bailey from the uh, Governor of the Bank of England and Christine Lagarde, the, the chairperson of the European Central Bank, have all said more recently that they're going to raise rates aggressively to tame inflation. Uh, these were the same central bankers, especially Christine Lagarde, who expected inflation to be transitory uh, and only in the last sort of two months has suggested that um, the European Central Bank will have to raise rates. Um, and in fact, even in March this year, the Fed was still completing their quantitative quantitative easing program, which is really pouring oil on troubled waters. So they're actually still injecting money into the financial system when inflation was already running uh, pretty hot. Uh, so now uh, I guess there's a likelihood of an overreaction uh, from central banks, but that is the price I think Western economies are going to pay um, uh, as central bankers uh, run the risk of tipping their economies into a recession. Um, and it's not something that um, central bankers want to do, but they've made their bed and they've got a lie in, in it. And I think Fed and other central banks will try and downplay the chances of a recession. Uh, more recently, a couple of Fed members uh, last week have sp um, spoke uh, about only a modest chance of a recession. But in a way, it's sort of worrying in itself that they're saying that because clearly the belief is that the, the, the action that the Federal Reserve, the Bank of England, the European Central Bank take will put pressure on economies and could tip them into a recession. But remember, a lot of what's happening uh, with inflation is a global issue. It's nothing to do with what the Fed are doing, what the European Central Bank are doing and what the Bank of England are doing. But the banks, these central banks have to look after what they can control. And that means um, applying the brakes in their own economies as they see fit.